Hello, everybody. So I'm very excited because tonight we're going to talk about Prince Harry and his court case against the media regarding the phone hacking and the fact that right now his ex, Chelsea Davey, has been, her name has been thrown around during this case. They're talking about Harry and Chelsea, Harry and Chelsea. And so I thought it would be good to sort of revisit this talk about the relationship, talk about like, is it even possible? I mean, he's married to another woman. Why would it be something that they need to be talking about? But apparently he's upset about it. I do know that he wanted her to be interviewed for the book and she said no. So we're going to talk about this. I'm going to welcome everybody first. I am Deanna here from Hot for History. I do cover mainly, um, I make a lot of shorts about quirky history and I also do cover what I'm calling history in the making. I'm actually going to start titling these things. You know, that's going to be the series and the playlist history in the making when I go live to talk about things like current events and what's happening now that pertains to history, which would be the royal family, too. So welcoming all of you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And let's dive into it in just a second. Um by the way, some of us just finished watching the Queen Charlotte series, and we will go into that another time. It'll be another little history in the making um, topic that we discuss, um, maybe even tomorrow night, if I can get away for Mother's Day. So here's the big news. Do you guys remember when Chelsea and Harry were dating? I totally remember. I remember how cute they were, like they were ador an adorable couple years ago, but um, she was her own kind of girl. She loved, she's from Zimbabwe. He loved Africa. He met her, you know, she was also in the UK, but also in Zimbabwe. And he even met her family there. Um, and so they were, you know, it was like one of his first loves. Um, the word on the street was that she just didn't want to tolerate or deal with sort of the Royal scrutiny. And so they broke up. Now it's coming back into the news that she broke up, that they were broken up because of the media circus. So the question is like, which came first? Like, was it that? Because friends are even saying, oh no, she just didn't, Harry was not her kind of guy, you know? So what people are wondering is like, okay, was it the media or was it Harry's paranoia and fear of the media that did it? I mean, literally, they were getting their pictures taken a lot. So I don't know. Um, Black Belt Bear. No, I oh, OK, I need to watch that, Stephen. I've I know all about the concerns, but I haven't seen it in the past couple of weeks. So I am going to have to address that and I'll be happy to address that. So let's dive into this. First, I do want to see if any of you guys have, um, I know that MC or no, it was EH said that she remembers Harry and Chelsea. I remember them. They were very cute. But basically he's saying that the alleged phone tapping that he's, you know, accusing um, MCM um, of ruined his relationship with this fan beloved uh, ex-girlfriend. Okay. So everybody loved Chelsea. Uh, she was kind of quiet. Um, she didn't really talk that much to the press. She was beautiful. She, they were always laughing. Um, and so they were, they were, they seemed like a well-matched couple, but they may have been too young, right? Now she has her own company in Zimbabwe and she also has, um, you know, she lives there. She has a, she has a kid, she's married. And so she seems happy. Okay. So it says, right when we knew everything about Prince Harry's past and other details comes to the front forefront, his childhood relationship uh, from his childhood to his relationship with Mary, Mar Meghan Markle. We thought we knew it all until this MGN trial. I think I said MCN a second ago. I did not mean to say that, but um, media group network it's called. Um, in fact, we just learned that Harry's relationship with his ex-girlfriend Chelsea may have fizzled because of these phone hacking charges. Um, so Davey allegedly decided a royal life was not for her after the alleged unlawful information um, gathering from Mirror. Oh, I thought it was Media Group. Yeah, no, Mirror Group Network. Sorry, guys, I messed that up. Um, per The Guardian. So she is saying they're, sorry, I meant to change it. 
Um, but Harry became immediately suspicious of anyone named in stories about him and felt that he could not trust anybody. Even at such a young age, it also caused great challenges in his relationship with, with ex-girlfriend Chelsea Davy and made him fear for her safety. Sherburne, his attorney, said that every time he was in a relationship or even rumored relationships, so they're trying to show a pattern that MGN, Mirror Group Network, was always getting into his business and causing problems in his relationships, the, that the whole person's family was even called out and often their friends would be dragged into chaos and find themselves the subject of unlawful activity on the part of MGN. In court documents, Sherburn said these activities, including the alleged unauthorized access of phone voicemails, caused the Duke huge distress and created a huge amount of paranoia. In other words, he he's not paranoid in general, general. It's just because of the media that he's paranoid like this. And then it was also alleged that the phones were tapped during Harry and Davies' re, uh, trip to uh, South Africa, which caused a huge strain in the relationship and led Harry to have huge bouts of depression and paranoia. Um, and so basically they're saying that that's what caused the breakup. So a little bit about the relationship, they dated on and off again from 2004 to 2011. And she was even his plus one to William and Kate's wedding in 2011. And they called it quits for good because she decided the royal life wasn't for her. And Queen Elizabeth II apparently worked hard to convince Harry to break it off. And then in his book, he sort of mentions her. He talks about that, but he also talks about Sha Sasha Walpole, about losing his virginity. So he goes into everything. And so he talks about her there. So do you guys, what do you guys know about this? And what do you think? Do you think this is our, these are legitimate concerns? Um, I don't know. I feel like it's hard to tell with Harry, which came first, the chicken or the egg. In other words, was he overly paranoid in general because of his trauma with his childhood or what, I mean, what came first, really? Let's try to figure that out. So it says he claimed as Dave, Davey decided that rural life was not for her, but it was because of all of this. They were never on their own, which placed a huge amount of unnecessary stress and strain on their relationship. And it basically goes on and on. So if I'm sure Megan just loves these stories about, yeah, I know, I know, because I, I heard at one point that Megan reached out to Chelsea and I know that they were trying desperately to have um, to have her agree to either speak about, you know, like endorse the book, endorse the series, endorse and, you know, confirm, confirm this drama. But she in true Chelsea style was like, mm, nope. I'm not going to do it. I think one of them, I believe it was Cressida, actually reached out into the um, it's Buckingham Palace to talk about it. So, um, and I remember Chelsea being chased around by the media. Yes, too bad he would have married Chelsea. Chelsea was good for him and a better fit. That's what a lot of people think. Um, but you know what? It's funny because I remember right before Spare, I was reading up on some stories about her Cressida and then there were like a handful of other girlfriends and like most of them were like no thank you no thank you I mean you think the prince of England you know one of the heirs in England would have had like women like lining up the streets but apparently uh they say he was having problems but I don't know what's true and what's not true right so that's what they're saying I think H was paranoid before any of this and that is a really great point because I mean, I personally think it's to be expected, unfortunately, that you will get that kind of attention when you're engaged or dating. And so if you're wise, you kind of will address it prior to dating. You will address where you're going to go, how you're going to go. You're going to kind of prep, prep the girl or go out privately, figure out that you'll meet her privately somewhere, you know, and then when you are public, talk about kind of what's going on and you just expect it. You just expect it. And so... My question is, you would think that, you know, the Prince of Wales, you would think that Prince William and Kate would have endured a lot more um, because they did they did have cameras on them a lot because they were everybody was so interested. But you just don't hear that from them. So I don't know. I'm not quite sure. 
Um, but I do think there's something to what Lynn says regarding like, what was it? Was it paranoia first that made it heightened? Because there's that expression, whatever you focus on, you find. And if you really think that, oh my gosh, it's so bad. They're on me all the time. You know what I'm saying? So we'll see. And, oh, I see what you're saying now. Mm, sounds like a potential Camilla. I know what you're, I know what you're referring to, Stephen. I know what you're referring to. You're thinking that, okay, maybe Harry will be like, okay, you know, I'll go back to my first love. Or maybe you're not saying that. I think that's what you're saying. I think that's what you're saying. What would happen if all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm going to go back to my first love. He was um, a public figure at birth and loved all of the goodies um, of, of that life and still does. He um, he won't prove causation. Yeah. And that's what I'm going to get at right now is to talk about. OK, so I was right with what you said. Um, I'm going to talk about the case a little bit. I haven't studied it a lot, but I find it fascinating. I'm close to his age. I went through um, hell with my in-laws. If the person is right, you push through. I don't think she like is paranoia because yeah, that's possible that it was just sort of like, Hey, um, no, yeah, no, I'm not going to marry you. And there were, like I said, there were several that were like, okay, no, I, I can live a better life. These women that he dated were all aristocrats and just think about it. Like both of them, Cressida and um, Chelsea, and there were more, but I'm just talking about them specifically. They married very, very well. And, you know, Chelsea is an attorney and she has her own business. She has a, this a really cool jewelry business called Aya. It's A-Y-A. Um, I think it's Aya Zimbabwe or Aya South Africa. I'm sorry if I don't know the exact thing, but she also is married now. They can have kind of they knew that they could have better lives um, that wasn't in the public eye while they're still doing well. So it's not like, I don't think Chelsea was like overly impressed by the Royal piece. Like she just, you know, she, she wasn't. Um, okay. Let me see. Did I know that princess Anne was dating Andrew Parker Bowles when I heard about that when Camilla was dating Prince Charles, it's so wild, isn't it? Uh, Camilla dug her nails into Andrew after the queen refused Charles to marry her. Yeah. So, Okay, so I see what you're saying. <laughs> Another piece of the soap opera. So Anne is dating Andrew Parker Bowles. Charles is like, I want to marry this woman, Camilla. And then the queen's like, no, you're not going to. And then Andrew Parker Bowles is like, oh, then I'm going to, or Camilla's like, well, then I'm going to take him. And so that happens. And so can you imagine what the dynamic is now? Like, no wonder Anne was like, girl, you are not the queen consort. You know, it's probably, pro oh yeah, so you're saying the same same thing I'm saying. You're saying it's the one, uh, it's one of the reasons why Princess Anne doesn't like Camilla. Woo, okay. So let's talk a little bit about the hearing, especially, especially I'm going to talk a little bit about Piers, who is, um, you know, you love or hate him or you love and hate him at the same time. I kind of am like, I feel like I play ping pong with him. Like sometimes I'm like, yeah. And then other times I'm like, oh my gosh, don't say that, right? So that's how I am with him. Um, sometimes I, I mean, I, I like him, but I also am like, sometimes he's just maybe a little too extra regarding that. Um, so I don't know. I'm going to talk about him in a second regarding that. Sometimes I feel he has that grumpy man syndrome. It's, it's just something that sometimes I've seen um, older guys get when they're, they, when they get much older, but okay. As the third day of Prince Harry's hearing against the mirror group net newspapers resume, the court heard uh, that there are 147 articles on the Duke of Sussex um, involved discussing Harry's case. His lawyer, David Sherborne, said that of the 147 articles, they're going to bring up 33 of them. And then he said the Duke of Sussex, one of the most prominently covered individuals by the defendant's titles, MGN's case is throughout the entire period, there was only one occasion of unlawful information gathering. In written submissions, Mr. Sherborne said the Duke's claim covered the period of 1995 to 2011 and is significant, not just in terms of the span, but also in the range of activities. So to make note, this did not happen while he was dating uh, Megan, but I believe he's trying to show cause. And by the way, they're trying to say that the, uh, that the palace 
knew and leaked all of this. So all of a sudden I had one of those light bulb moments where I was like, oh, now I see what's happening. All the, the papers are going to have to say we weren't phone hacking. We got legitimate tips from the royal family. And somehow that's going to turn around to be, OK, now I'm now I'm going after my own family. That's what I think is going to happen. Do you guys agree with me? OK, to think that Andrew had Anne and Camilla kind of gross. To, Andrew, that's Andrew Parker Bowles. Yes. Andrew is basically the royal stable boy. Oh, my gosh. Guys, you're we're, we're getting really into like oh, sounds like a soap opera. It was the perfect way to save the prince and princess. Um, I, yeah, I guess the queen, the queen's uh, wisdom many times is like, you know, dead on. So, um, so the barrister previously alleged that those responsible for management and finances of the company were well aware what was going on. The claims brought forward by four individuals. Um, Harry included uh, talk about phone hacking, also called blagging. So let's talk about what Piers said, because I want to talk about that. Okay, so he was confronted. He insisted he has never told anybody to hack a phone, and he described the unlawful practice as completely wrong. He was the editor of the Daily Mirror from 1995 to 2004, and he told two he told BBC's Two's Amal Rajan interview, I think phone hacking is completely wrong and shouldn't have been happening. And it was lazy journalists being lazy. And he said, there's no evidence. I knew anything. Of course, he didn't say I didn't know anything. He just said there's no evidence um, about any of this. And I never told anybody to hack a phone. Um, asked about being a hands-on editor, Morgan said, I didn't know about hacking. So I don't care whether it stretches people's credulity or not. And then he goes on to say he was not going, this was kind of, I think he was absolutely correct in this. He's like, I'm not going to take lectures on privacy invasions from Prince Harry as he was intercepted by ITV journalists on the first day of the trial brought against his former employer over alleged unlawful gathering. Asked whether he would take publisher's lead in apologizing to the Duke of Sussex, um, who edited the mirror from again, 1995, 2000 work said, all I'm going to say is I am not going to take lectures on privacy invasion from Prince Harry, somebody who has spent the last three years ruthlessly and cynically in invading the Royal family's privacy for vast commercial gain and told a pack of lies about them. So I suggest he gets out of court and apologizes to his family. Okay. So what's the end game here? Let's, let's look at all of these first. Um, I agree that this is a way to prove that he's, yeah. So I think this is the point. At the end of the day, it's not about peers. It's not even about um, the Daily Mirror because they're going to have to say, we did nothing, nothing. In fact, what they're saying, let me see if there's another headline here. Um, they're saying basically that it's the royal family. Tabloid stories about Prince Harry were based on information disclosed by members or representatives of the royal family. A court has heard. Whew. So here's my question. I'm not an attorney. So if they find out that this were these were leaks from um, the royal family to the tabloids and it's not phone hacking, is that still like, except for it being interpersonal stuff, um, can, does he have a case against his own family regarding that? I mean, and he's going to have to be specific as to what those were. So Prince Harry is currently involved in a number of court cases. We know that. Um, and so he's, the latest court is the MGN one where the accusers allege the stories published over a number of years were from phone hacking. And then basically they said, look, we're kind of, we did do one, one thing, we did do one thing, but we didn't do the other. This is like the publishers. All the other stuff came from the royal family. And then, so that's, like I said, that's ma that made me think, okay, that has to be then his goal, right? It has to be his goal. Okay, Piers didn't order the hacking, but he published the info. He's part of the conspiracy. So, and that's a good question. It's like, okay, he said, you know, I never, whatever, agreed to that or whatever. And, but he didn't say I didn't do it. And he was part of the publication. So, and then that's another question. He hasn't worked there since 2000 and was it 11, what did I just say? 11, four, 2004. So 
I don't understand like how they're able to do this. Um, little did I know Morgan allegedly involved like him. And yes, he's, uh, he can be so much. Harry should stop the lawsuit game talk about stress. I think part of the money, uh, part of his money minded behavior. Yeah. I mean, I don't really know. I'm not quite clear what the end game is because here's the thing. Um, I don't know, unless he has really great proof, great evidence that this is indeed still happening. Um, and his behavior did add fuel to the fire. Like Harry basically is gaslighting. It's the definition of gaslighting. He's saying, okay, well you did this. And so, you know, but what about the privacy? But then there's also the saying like, do two wrongs make a right. So just because he did it, you know, with Pierre's reaction, doesn't mean that one of them wouldn't still be held liable or guilty for that. Um, they are saying that the hacking was authorized by the staff of Clarence House. The staff worked for Camilla. Here we go again with Camilla. So <laughs> I'm sorry when you say this. I I still I'm going off on a tangent. I, I I think these days because we're all so exposed to so much media and we scroll on our phones, we all have a little bit of ADD. So I'm a little slightly distracted. When you bring this up, EH, all I can think of is I'm sorry, but when they put that crown on her head, I did see a smirk. I saw a smirk. And again, I thought she looked beautiful. And like I said, there are many arguments to say she deserves this because of their longstanding relationship. But when they put that crown on her head. She was like, whoo, like you could see it on her face. So the Harry, to break it down and what you're saying right here, that the staff worked for Camilla and it was authorized by Clarence House. They're working really hard. The Royals are working really hard to make sure their doo-doo smells good, right? And so Harry's basically saying, how can I go after my family? This is what I, this is, this is what we can suppose and like, speculate, right? That maybe what he's doing with this lawsuit is like, okay, they did phone hack, they did this, but we're not going to get out of the royal family. But if we threaten to sue them and it's going to be a lot of money, they may come clean and say, dude, we didn't phone hack. We got that information from Clarence House. Like we got that information from there. They're the ones who your own family gave us the information. So he, he it seems like he it's a fishing expedition. Like he is trying really hard to get that truth out, which, um, you know, I can understand his hurt and everything, but that is the end of the day. Cause I've been wondering what is the, what is his goal? Like, you know, what is it? Um, I saw a smirk and a wink. She winked because she won <laughs> and listen to Harry's defense. Cause I was thinking about this the other day. Cause I've been reading more and more stuff. I believe us. We all know, we all know every conspiracy about Diana's death, right? We all know it. So I'm just saying that we're all aware of it. But um, if God forbid, it wasn't just an accident or whatever, there are thoughts in many people's heads as to why Harry and Megan are acting this way. That's all I'm saying is that there, if there's something deeper, something more sinister than I guess their behavior would be justified, but wouldn't you just be like, I'm out of here and I'm going to keep my mouth shut. But if you are really seeking justice, especially for somebody that you love and he thinks that there's more to this or he knows that there's something more to this, I don't know. Maybe we just don't get it. So let me see. What are we saying here? Harry actually fed information to the journalist himself. And that's the other thing is that we all know that Megan has been accused, especially, although she was not, to be clear, Megan was not involved in any of these court cases, right? So I'm, but I'm just saying that it was a, it's a pattern, you know, a tactic that they use. And I've always said with Harry, even though I can see that his wounds are deep, you know, regarding the media, it also is, seems like a kind of sick codependent relationship. Like he can't let go of the media drama. Like that's how he survives. He is a media drama guy. Like, and, and the way that he's going to fight the thing that he hates the most is with the thing he knows the most, which is the media. So it's just this sort of sick thing. And yes, we're doing that thing that they call rubber nut necking when you're kind of, you know, you're kind of looking when you're not supposed to be looking at the side of the road. Um, it, it's us just trying to speculate and make commentary because this is history in the making. We are in the middle of real life history. It's very interesting. And so I don't know, but 
It is definitely possible that he did it. End game is money, embarrassment for the royal family, help Megan with her payback. Do you guys think after, because I think that there's still a buzz regarding the coronation. And, and I think, you know, Megan, I didn't talk about this, but she came out and she had her little hike. Do you think that the coronation kind of softened all of that drama? And, or do you think they're going to come back with something else? Um, and he's using Omid Scobie, yes, as evidence of peers knowing. So, but this guy, Omid Scobie, um, I think has been proven many, many times that he's definitely just kind of, I don't know if he's paid by them or whatever. He's the one who wrote that first book. Um, so I'm not sure. I mean, everybody's sort of eye rolling about Omid Scobie because they're saying he doesn't really, really know. So Prince Charles and Camilla use Clarence House as their office in London. Yes. And that's where they live. They still live there. Um, by the way, they live in separate bedrooms, except for the, the extra bedroom is for, you know, meetups. Um, Harry always says he knows truth and it's like a secret. And so that's what I was talking about. Um, because I mean, when we come on to these lives, I think we're all trying to like piecemeal things together. It's like, we're putting together a little collage. Like we're trying to put it all together with these prompts and what we all know. And at the end of the day, we don't know the in, inside stuff because we're just, we know what they tell us. But we also are smart people, so we can watch human behavior. And there's that part of me, like I said, that wonders, okay, he may know stuff. He always says he knows truth. But he's also the type of guy who may not know what we're, what he, he may be just alluding to these conspiracies to fuel the fire of his supporters. And it may none of it be true. Do you know what I'm saying? Like he may be going, well, I know things when he's just trying to support himself. Um, so I'm not sure. I, I, I listen to everything that he has to say and I'm like, eh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Um, okay. So I don't think that Harry should have wrote the book personally. Yeah. Oh, I know. And now his um, ghost writer is coming out saying all kinds of things about the book. And I think if he was to write a book, I get it. But we were all sort of shocked about how far he went with the book. It's like he just puked all over the pages. He had no, no sense of restraint, no sense of poise, no tact. It was something else. Um, Clarence House was trading information with the media. They gave info about Megan in order to squash negative info about Prince William. And that's what we hear a lot. I mean, again, I'm, I've heard that a lot. I don't know if it's true, but I wouldn't doubt it to be true because I think both sides do that. I, I wouldn't put hair, it past through Harry either. At the end of the day, can we just be monogamous? Honestly, the strife and drama isn't worth it. Um, you're talking about monogamous, like in their relationships. <laughs> I mean, we talk about like royal mistresses. Or are we talking about the way that we kind of go back and forth? I don't know. Okay, so I think he should have brought brought the book, uh, brought the book because they were eviscerating his wife, and we're talking about the monarchy with all the dirt, and they have a ton of it. Um, I mean, if we're being honest, there is that part of me that wants to think that it's possible that Harry is, I don't know, sometimes when there's a, a negative, there's also a positive from it. And so I think that he's going way too far. And at the same time, I think that there's been a lot of secrets, a lot of cover up, a lot of pretending everything is beautiful and rosy when it's not. So in some ways, this Harry honesty is refreshing. I think that he could have written a book that, I don't know, I feel like, I, I guess the word would be to me petty. I feel like some of the stuff was so petty. Like, do we really need to hear about the lip gloss situation with Kate? Like, do we really need to hear that? Um, although I also think that the royal family being offended by the baby bump comment was also petty. It's like, as Americans, I don't think like if somebody said that to me, like I, I was cranky because of my baby bump, I wouldn't, I would probably be like, girl, stop. It's not that like, I would just, and I probably wouldn't have thought about it again. So I don't know. Um, and now if Diana hadn't died, Camilla wouldn't be queen. So it fuels the fire for conspiracy. 
Well, I don't know. I've heard that before. I've heard them say things like, well, he wouldn't have been able to get married without um, without Diana dying. But then, I mean, couldn't he have still got, got married? They were divorced. So they were divorced and couldn't he have still got married? I don't know. I don't know the rules of the Anglican church. Um, I can't, I cannot, I'm about to post EH's comment, but because, you know, we all kind of go off on these tangents sometimes. We can have an episode that's all about the mistresses and monogamy. I'm going to put it on the list after the Queen Charlotte discussion, which all of you have to watch the Queen Charlotte thing. I did cry, but tiny little bit of spoiler alert. It's a thousand percent not accurate, but it was fascinating and I think well done. Okay. Um, let's see. I wonder they puke all over his wife with the help of the tabloid. If they did it, if you know history, you know, they've done it. They have, they've done. I mean, here's the thing. I think we know more now than we used to, because who knows what, I mean, we saw this back and forth with Diana and Charles and Camille, like Diana was using the media, then Charles uses, used the media. Like, so the Royal family, it all started back with, um, I mean, mainly Queen Elizabeth. There was some media with, you know, King George, um, but the media really took off with Queen Elizabeth. She was genius with using that. So they all kind of knew. Um, but here's the one that's kind of sick. All the way back to George the fifth. This one's disgusting to me. He was um, about to die and because he was so sick. And the surgeon, this was proven in, um, from this diary that they found in 1980, that they fast forwarded his death so that it could make the newspapers the next morning. His wife, Queen Mary, was like, please take him out of his misery. And so they basically euthanized him. Um, already proven from his doctor that that's what happened because of the media. And I know, like, again, I get a little deep with this. Like, you go back to that. They wanted to make sure it was in the Sunday paper. Okay. So there was a time that he had to die and he had to make the announcement in order to have it get into the paper. And I bring this up because there's a history in this family of manipulating media. Um, and so all of the fingers are wagging at Harry and Megan, Megan may be not telling people when the baby was born and them not, you know, saying it in the way that they're used to. This is how you do it. You have to have people there to prove and blah, blah, blah. But the royal family has manipulated media for a long time in some very sleazy ways. Absolutely. Um, so I thought I didn't, Okay, I did post that, right? Because that, that's what prompted me to say that. Um, okay, so Harry's book made things worse. He used he used the same medium um, his mother, Diana, used to manipulate and coerce the royal family. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying about him is that I feel, and yet I kind of understand because this is all he's known. His entire life, he's been in the media. His entire life, he's been hurt by the media. His mother, again, we don't know the full true story, but if we're talking about what story they gave us, okay, the driver was drunk. He was going too fast. She didn't have her seatbelt on. She, they say she would have survived if she had her seatbelt on. The media was coming after her. She dies. Then all of a sudden there's all of this media when Harry becomes a teenager because he's being the bad boy and it's all out there. So he has been hurt by the media, but he absolutely uses the media because he's probably an expert at it now. And he doesn't know any other way. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't think it was a big deal not to share your lip gloss. I'm sorry, but I feel like Kate couldn't just say, like, I would have said, girl, I am, you're not using my lip gloss. I'm sorry. You know, you're not using my lip gloss. And why are they, if they're about to go on stage, why don't they have a makeup person or somebody at least with extra lip gloss? I'm sorry. No, you're not using my lip gloss either. Um, and I'm not overly picky about that kind of thing. And I have three other sisters and I have four daughters, you know, so we 
share almost everything, but no. Um, they still could have gotten uh, married with her alive. Okay, so Charles was planning it, which is why he took the title of HRH away from Diana. Oh, I know that's one of the saddest things for me. So the, for those of you who don't know, um, in the divorce settlement, uh, Charles would not relent on Diana having the, the her royal highness uh, title. That's what Diana wanted, knowing she would be the future queen, the king's, sorry, mother, the queen mother. Um, and so, hmm. Hey, would she have been the queen mother if they were divorced? That's a good question. You tell me what you think. Um, because she would have been the mother, which would have been, I think they would have called her the queen mother, but I don't know if there's been a precedence before regarding um, divorce. So I am worrying about Princess Kate. I think she's struggling with the same eating disorder as Diana. Sometimes she looks so thin. She really does. She looks super thin. And yeah, I wonder about that too. Um, Megan's photo. She was trying to make a statement as usual. I was so confused. Like, why are you like taking a picture while you're hiking? And it, you know, like, I don't know. It was very odd. She still had her, all, all of her like multi hundred thousand dollar, you know, ring on and stuff. So it was wild. Um, so I agree with you, Stephen. Yes, she was not innocent. She made choices that made her situation worse by feeding her full info to the. So it's been a pattern. Diana is not innocent, but obviously none of us wanted what happened to her to happen. Um, but I'm uh, I'm going to do probably a short video on this. I did I did feel very sad recently when I was taught, and I knew this, but I forgot. When Diana was little, her parents divorced and her mother just took off. And then Diana, she did have the custody, but Diana ended up living with her dad, with the stepmother, who she basically called Acid Rain because her name was Rain. Um, and Diana would sit waiting for her mother to come. And I bring it up just because there were, there's a lot of pain, a lot of loneliness, a lot of feelings of abandonment to begin with. And, you know, my parents were divorced when I was about the same age. And I know that it's really, really hard. Um, and so there was that, that she did bring into the relationship and that's hard stuff. Okay. So they should have been married. They, sh they could have been married. Okay. We, the King, okay. Uh, married, not be by the King. The King is also the head of the church of England. It's, it's so complicated. Yes, he is the King of England. He is the head of the church. In some ways it was better that they got married prior so the way that they did it, they got married, somebody married them and they, he was in the church, but the queen would not go into the church to endorse the wedding, but she did go to the reception. The royals are manipulating the media. It's not just Diana and Harry. Yes. They're all doing it. I mean, here's the thing. I mean, I've been in entertainment, some form of entertainment my entire life. If you're like a movie star or if you're an actress, you have like a whole PR team, like they've got it in their offices. And so for the regular, the, the confusion with us is that we're not taught that these are entertainment personalities. We're taught that they are royals. But at the end of the day, they represent England for, you know, to be basically the influencers in that space. They really are entertainment. It's to boost the tourist industry. It's to continue this monarchy. And like I said, the last time I was shocked at my reaction when I saw King Charles walk down the aisle in the robe, I giggled for a second because I was so used to seeing the beautiful, like black and white things of this beautiful young woman, this queen from 1953. And it looks so vintage and so great. And when I saw it in purpose, I was in person, not in person, but like you know, in real time, I was like, oh my gosh, that's so embarrassing. Cause look, it looks silly, right? It looked silly to me, but, um, it is, they are entertainers. They are people that are kind of in the public eye. So they're using the press in order to promote that brand. And in order to promote that brand, they bring in so much money into England and it makes England what it is. And yes, there are those, you know, Republicans, they, they call them Republicans because they're for the Republic, not for the monarchy. Right. And so they want it to stop. 
but it's been over a thousand years and I don't think it's going to stop. But the facade, the facade is absolutely that, oh, it's, they're not using the media like, you know, celebrities would. They use it better. They're like this, they, they know the drill. They know the drill. So, and yes, happy Mother's Day to everybody. Hey guys. Okay. It said her mother left the home without telling her. She basically disappeared overnight and it was devastating for her. Her brother said that she used to sit there and wait for her mother to come home. Very, very sad. Okay. So at the end of the day, um, what we've established here is Harry has a lawsuit. One lawsuit of many, right? This one's about the fo phone hacking with the mirror group net network newspapers, um, which Piers Morgan was part of and says, I didn't do anything. And who is he to come at me about the privacy thing when he's like on the private worldwide privacy tour, that's not a worldwide privacy tour. So they're both gaslighting each other. Um, and then, so we've got that. Plus now we have the old girlfriend coming out. And when the old girlfriend's, you know, being talked about, and I'm sure Chelsea really is not interested in like having any of this, you know, she's got her own business. She's got her handsome husband and her child. She'll probably have another one soon. And she's living her best life. It's like, she's living the life in my opinion that Harry wanted, like, let me go to Zimbabwe. Let's have business. Let's have a family. Let's go back to, back to the UK and Zimbabwe. Let's do our charitable stuff and have businesses if we need to, but that's not the life he's living. So that's the picture that we've had. And we've also established in this conversation, whether it's um, Harry and Diana or, you know, Charles and Camilla or even Queen Elizabeth or even back to Queen Mary and, and Queen Victoria. Like Queen Victoria wrote a lot. She wrote a lot of stuff. And by the way, Queen Victoria's daughter burned a lot of her diaries because of the supposed affair she was having with John. I think it was John Brown. I can't remember his name. Yeah. Her, you know, one of her guys who she was madly in love with. So this has been going on forever. It is a habit. It is a, it's a thing. So nobody's fully innocent here. It's just, it just, it's hard to ask. It's hard to figure out. And since it's history in the making and we're trying to figure out exactly what it is, we can talk about it and we can have conversations about it. Um, stay at Goring Hotel next time in London. Okay. Ooh. Um, near Buckingham Palace and, and Queen love to go there. A person there told me once they had to take to take a drunk Harry back to the palace. Ooh. Okay, what am I missing? Oh, the Tory party. Yeah, I think I was talking about, and the royals are Tories. Um, in Ireland, I think is when they refer to them as the Republicans or the not my king party, whatever. I thought the ceremony was archaic and shortened. Um, he looked ridiculous, okay. I think Prince William would have handled that cape a lot better, you know, like, tall regal being able but yes it made me laugh and again it was one of those reactions that that shocked me of myself i was like oh my gosh i didn't think i would laugh about this um no harry's drama does not end okay look i agree with how harry and megan have handled things however oh, i don't agree sorry lynn um i don't think what the paper did was right right diana unfortunately had many issues she passed on to harry in the media yeah I forgot to say, Lynn, I should have said this. Yes, you know, Camilla and Charles, Harry and Meghan, and the media. They all are playing a game with us. And we're, it's it's a billion dollar, multi-billion dollar industry. And it's probably what, at the end of the day, as people would complain, they have to play this game. They have to play this game because that's what they're there for. That's the sad thing. And so the media knows that they have some authority because, hey, you don't play the game. What are you there for? You're the royal family. You're supposed to give us stuff. Um, did you ever look back and see him in this? under? No, I didn't get to see that. I'm going to have to look for a picture. I didn't see the undershirt scene. Did he have like his arms out too? Oh my gosh, I did not see that. Okay, guys, I am going to call it a night, but if you can, I don't know if I'm going to be able to come on here tomorrow night 
for the Queen Charlotte review. I want to do more of those where we go now that the coronation's over into kind of historic media that's out there. And of course, current events, we will totally do that. But I want to talk about it. I do think Shonda Rhimes, I'm not going to get into the whole thing, did a great job, but it is so off historically. And they admit it. They tell you that at the beginning, which was very classy. It was done really well. It made me cry. I thought a couple scenes were like, oh no, don't do that. Like, why are we, why do we need to see all this stuff? Um, and then it was just, I don't know. There were some scenes that I was like, I don't understand. But um, but it was interesting. They did touch upon some of the history and we'll talk about it. So guys, have a very, very, very happy Mother's Day. And we will talk to you guys later. Look for the announcement. I'm going to shoot for tomorrow at eight or nine, but my daughter is coming late. One of my daughters is coming late. So if I can't get on, it'll be Monday. So we'll talk to you soon. Good night.